Yeah. We're ready to talk, yeah? Let's go, bro. Yeah, yeah man. Right then. What's everyone saying? Nah, man. New settings. Well, let's adjust the elephant in the room. Obviously, we're in a new spot. We're at No Star Studio um, in North London. We've had to kind of change our setup today and we'll probably be our setup for the next couple of weeks as we as we get some, some things sorted out in our in our personal lives. But um Con, like what's what's going on? You good? Yeah, when he's referring to personal life, he's basically being nice and trying to say like certain men are homeless. <laughs> so, so, certain men are trying to like find their way <laughs> find their feet uh, again. Trying that. to find their way from the sleeping behind the jet car wash. <laughs> um trying to elevate, trying to stop Making money by break dancing in Piccadilly Circus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So basically, what he's referring to is me and Connor <laughs> are, are looking for a place together. He's just moved out of his his last place, which is where we used to record record the pod. Yeah, so, so we're just, we're just figuring stuff out, but we're still trying to give you the content. So we're at no stars today. Abs, what are you saying? Local for me. Local, local, <laughs> local. <laughs> Not lovely. We there. Got picked up as well. Yeah, got picked I'm up. Nice. Getting I'm nice home. today. Got picked Close up. Close to home. Fresh, fresh trim. Everything, like, Tottenham playing today. Everything's just what going well. What do you want in life? Flipping. Going ticket. well, well. A ticket would have been <laughs> ticket nice. Would have been nice a ticket would have been nice, still. Yeah, no, nah, I hear you. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah? It's Did right. you fo- have football this weekend? Nah, we had. We didn't have a game. We had a like a friendly game. Cause, but, um, you're, but you're still in the track suit. In the tracksuit. <laughs> that, that's right. I got to no, wake up for it, innit? Yeah. I got to no wake up. Let me just slap yeah. on the tracksuit. Then you went, oh, the tracksuit is... It's up there. It's, it's all right there. still. Oh, it's the still. colour's a bit, but yeah. it's comfy. It's yeah. nice. Nice, nice. And obviously, stuff. since the topic that we're talking about, I thought... Yeah. yeah. Get, get in the zone. Oh, get in the zone. Oh, I I you went over my head. Yeah, yeah. You didn't... I'm not levels. I didn't want to say nothing. I didn't want to say nothing. I thought, you know what? You don't get it. I'm not levels. I'm not levels. When he talks about the topic, then let's know. Then you'll get it while I'm wearing the tracksuit. I'm not levels. So if you didn't catch that, today we're going to talk about about non-league football and and the reason I want to talk about non-league football is because recently I've been talking to one of my brethren about like what he wants to do kind of in his footballing career so he's about 23 24 and he's just trying to find his feet obviously COVID has kind of messed up things for him and he's just trying to decide what he wants to do so he's got offers in non-league he's got offers abroad and he's got some possible professional offers uh, in the states Jeez. next year must be one hell of a player. <laughs> so for for these two players who have played not a, a lot of non-league football and professional football, I just wanted to talk about as a young player, is it maybe even sometimes better to play non-league football, and maybe you can also do something on the side, for example. So that kind of start with you actually. So obviously you was at West Ham to use eighteen, then you moved to Dagenham and Redbridge for a couple of years, then dropped into the non-league game, and then kind of just hired off trying to play non-league at a, a, a high level and up. moved in <laughs> and moved into other stuff so like talk me through that so you leave daggers before we do that like explain to them what's, what's non-league football what's non-league football why they spend their time sitting down vibing what the watch, hell is like, non-league football what's non-league football yeah. so non-league is football it? is just anything outside of the top four divisions in, the, in, in England I would say so outside of the Premier League the Championship League 1 and League 2 so that's step 1 Steps. Yeah, so yeah, I don't think the is... steps will they they were able to get the steps and that. No, part. they won't understand the steps. But, but non, ha- yeah, yeah. Why non-league? The league being professional, professional footballs. When yeah. you play in the league, that's referring to professional football. So you're playing full time. That is your job. Yeah, predominantly. Yeah, that's your. That's but your saying that, yeah, there's non-league teams that are full time. Exactly. And yeah. Players that are on contract. Yeah. yeah. So the, and the top in England anyway, the top four leagues make up professional football yeah anything below that is considered semi-professional yeah. slash non-league so mm-hmm. it's part-time and players managers will have other jobs usually to like make up for any difference in salary and all that kind of yep. stuff exactly exactly so yeah you kind of moved from Dagenham Red which a professional environment where that was your job training every day into semi-professional football and like why did you make that transition like, did you not think about maybe trying to play in other countries or anything like that at that time? So for me, like, I left playing professional football around 2021 20, um, and then went into non-league football, mainly because, like, that's the option I had at the time, mm. really and truly. Like, I didn't really have, like, any other... Didn't have So a lot of players, maybe they get released at, like, 18 or subsequent years after that and they have opportunities to go for trials at other professional clubs you mm. know 
um, I didn't have the opportunity. So the next best thing was to go and play like non-league or semi-professional football where you could still earn somewhat of a, you know, I, would, I wouldn't even call it a salary, but you can earn money playing non-league football and give and it gives you the time to work on other things, whether it be another job, university, business, whatever it is, because you go from training every day to training twice a week, maximum like three times mm. a week. So for me, I wanted to go to uni. So like non-league football, like was kind of perfect in that sense because it didn't inter, <coughs> it didn't interrupt with studying and stuff. So, and then the level change. Do you feel like there's a big difference between like League One, League Two football? And playing in a conference, for example, I don't. For me personally, from the outside looking in, I don't think there's a massive jump. And you see a lot of players that make that jump, or players that come down from League One into the conference, or players that go up from the conference into the league. Do you feel like there's a big difference in in level? I don't actually. Like, I mean, when I was playing Conference South, like maybe maybe I don't know seven eight years ago, like the gap was a bit wider. Mm-hmm. But I think like nowadays, like top conference teams, even conference, like everyone. Like, a lot of the teams have a lot of money now. Mm. So, like, they're attracting, like, players from, like, League Ones and Twos and stuff like that. Yeah. So, I don't think the, the gap's as wide as people make <laughs> out to be. And the style of football at that level is very direct. So, it's a it's a, probably an easier style to perfect. So, a yeah. lot of teams, like, are able it's a percentages to, game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, obviously, the higher you go up, it doesn't, it doesn't it's not as effective. But the gaps, the gaps not as, as yeah, I don't big. think I don't think the the gap is big between League Two and the Conference Prem or Step One, if you want to call it, and the Conference South. Mm. Yeah. I think all the diff- the only difference is is the percentages. Maybe a bit more fitness as well. Maybe no, I don't even think it's that. You know, it's just the percentages. I would say probably like what separates so League Two, the Conference and Conference South. What separates them from League One players? is the success rate in terms of if you're a defender, your headers and tackles, you're not you're making less mistakes. Yeah. Your success rate is higher mm. because you're at League One level. Mm. But when you go down, there's more mistakes. Yeah. There's more just little things that play up yeah. and players are not probably as like mentally strong as probably the ones at the top in terms of not like things happening, but like when you're in the game, you gotta make sure everything that you do is correct and on point. So mm. they will have less mistakes at League One than in League Two, not like, you know what I mean? Step one and, and so step two. And I think that's yeah. what separates them. I don't think there's some quality players out there in non-league that are just floating around, but they're just not being picked up. And that's why you see a 23-year-old, 24-year-old move into the league and everyone's like, oh my God. It's not that. It's just that he's been picked up by the right club, goes into the right environment and, and you flourish. flourish. That's, that's all it is. It's just being picked up at the right moment when you're performing or more times it's when your team's performing that people come and look at you mm. if your team's not doing well there's loads of good players that are just floating around yeah, do you know yeah, what I mean yeah. so I just think the separation is the success rate the percentages so for you why did you obviously you moved into the to the non-league game a little bit later I yeah. believe maybe like 22-ish yeah. Yeah. Why, why did you make that decision then and was it a <coughs> footballing decision was it a life decision was it a finance decision maybe all three of those yeah, yeah. It was, it was a bit of both for me. So at the time I was at Barnet, we was in the league and then got relegated to mm. the Conference Prem. But obviously we was like the top club, yeah. one of the top five clubs that were fighting to go back up. And in the first first year that we went down, we was fighting to go back up and missed out on the on the playoffs to go straight back up. Then new manager comes in um, and obviously I had one more year left on my contract. Um, the manager came in and he was like, look, you're not part of my plans. Yeah. But... I want you to, you're not part of my plans as my starting 11, but I want you around the squad. I want you to be a squad player. Right. But that means I'm going to have to dock your wages. Right. So at that time, it was like, I can't take a hit because we got relegated, really already taken a hit on the wages. Yeah, you yeah. want me to take another hit? And also, you're basically saying to me, you're not really going to play. play yeah. And I've been in this situation before, the season before, right. with obviously Davids and that. Um, and I thought, I, d- I deserve to play. Yeah. Like, you know, I've played in this league. I know I can do it. I deserve to play. But on top of that, you're going to cut my wages and, and I'm not going to play. Gonna play. Like, yeah. that's mad to me. Yeah, if you yeah, said yeah. to me, listen, your wages are staged. It means you've got to fight for your spot. No problem. I would have fought for it. Mm. Or the other way around where I'm going to cut your wages, but you're in my starting. Yeah, do you yeah. know what I mean? I'm thinking I can't I can't go through that again. So I, I, had, a few, I had a few options to stay at full-time level, but the clubs are like up north, different right. places. And I was like, 
I don't really want to move at this. I've just settled kind of thing. I don't really want to move. Um, then I got a phone call from Nursey. And Nursey's like, listen, someone's asking about you. I think you should go and consider it. Um, it was two hours away in Brighton. Yeah. And I was like, mm, this is mad. Yeah. And obviously, it's Nursey's someone that I trust. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. would never like say to me or put me on the phone to someone that thought can't help me in any way. Yeah. And he said, listen, like the money that you want or you want to be getting think he can match it or give you more and yeah. make it worth your while blah blah it just means you've got to drop down a level so i went i went i drove down to brighton you know what i said only because nursey has said it i spoke to the guy on the phone it was steve king i spoke to him on the phone he said come down play a game just see how you feel if you like it i turned up and i was like what am i di-? you know like i look <laughs> i walked out and like the pitch is on the hill there's mountains in front like it was it was by the sea so as you come down i'm literally i could see the yeah. sea yeah, like yeah, in yeah. brighton and I was just like, this like this is not what yeah, am I doing? What doing like here? what am I doing? Yeah. Bearing in mind we hadn't spoken nothing. Like me and the guy just spoke on the phone briefly. It's like, look, come down, have a look, see what yeah. we're trying to do. And I just thought straight away in my head, nah, it's a no. It's a hundred percent. You can't there's nothing you can offer me nothing. that's gonna make me stay. But I'm one of them people where I'm here, I'm gonna get on with it. And we was playing against a team, obviously I don't know who the team was that we was playing against. And I thought, you know what, I'm here now, I'm gonna play. Let's do it. Let's do it. And I played the game and I tore the game apart like mm. I didn't sack it off I was on job I yeah. was on it yeah. and even after the game the other manager came in at like we was at the bar I was talking to the to the, to the, um, to the managers having a chat after about you know the plans and all that kind of stuff and the other team's manager walked over and he was like if you don't sign him we'll sign him and I'm just thinking you don't even, I don't even know who you are like, not, <laughs> not in a rude way but he's like if you don't sign him we'll take him in a heartbeat and I was just like I'm one of them people I won't sack it off yeah. so I had a chat with, with like Kingy we had a chat and he offered me something that I couldn't really say no to. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was well, before the game. I was like, "There's nothing he can." Yeah. And then he was like, "Yeah, look, blah blah blah. We'll do this. We'll he do knows, that." Isn't we'll it? Do it. From yeah, he knows we're coming from a long way, and he's seen it. And I was like, "You know what? Why not?" Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I took it, man, and it was then. And after that, I stayed in non-league, and I think after the first three, four months, I didn't work. I didn't. I was here. I was training yeah. Tuesday, Thursday yeah. night, um, and then playing on Saturdays. And for the first few months, it was all right. You know, I was yeah. like a little bit like, "Bro, like I'm." I'm Earning some it's good money, it, yeah. training two nights a week, playing on a Saturday. The team's doing well. We're flying, yeah, we're yeah. bashing everyone. So I was like, "This is I can get used to this." Yeah. The traveling's a bit mad, but it's all right. And then obviously I'm keeping fit, going to the gym during the day and stuff like yeah. that. And then obviously then I'm still in touch with Nursey and I'm speaking to Nursey, and he's like, "Listen, be clever about what you're doing." And I was like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "Well, you're making some good money, yeah. but you can top your money up." And I was like, "Well, how am I gonna do that?" Work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have not worked yeah, yeah, ever. Yeah. yeah. I was like, what do you mean work? He's like, what do you enjoy doing? I was like, obviously we coach we I do yeah. a little bit of coaching. He's like, well, why don't you do something in coaching? Like, All right. So then he puts me in touch with another guy and he's like, Look, they've offered me the job, but I don't want it. Why don't you take it? And I was like, What do I need to do? And he's like, just gotta coach some like kids, blah blah blah, whatever. Anyways, went down and met this other guy. He said, look, can you put on the sessions? If you see you get along with the kid, straight after the guy sat me down, he's like, yeah, when you're on board. And he offered me like this little role of coaching like at a private school. And it was mad because now I'm like at private school, yeah. earning something. And now I'm making more than what I was doing playing full-time football. And I was like, this is mad. <laughs> like, this is crazy. Yeah. And I'm a grafter. I don't see it as I've got to wake up in the morning. Yeah. I don't see it like that. If I've got to get up in the morning, I'm getting up, go yeah. to work. So for me, it was shout like... Out, shout out, Nursey. You really helped. Yeah, Nursey really put you on the map, man. Yeah, he put, like, <laughs> and Nursey put this kid on the map, man. Like. Yeah, and, and yeah. I always say, I even put like a post up yesterday just yeah. saying like, just yeah. like some, obviously he got married and invited me yeah. to his wedding or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And me and Nursey are not friends in a way of like going out together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I don't think we've ever gone out, only like on that a team food, night yeah, out. Food. And I've known Nursey since I was what, 19? Mm. So I met my daggers yeah. at 19. Yeah. That's 10 years with someone I hardly ever see. Yeah, I yeah. hardly ever see, but always in touch. Yeah, yeah, and like, yeah. I don't really know none of his mates. He don't know yeah. none of my mates. Mm. But we have that connection and respect that if Nursey was to ring me right now and he had a problem, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's one of them. So I've got utmost respect because I know what he's done for me. Yeah, but he much. never, like... He didn't yeah, have to. It's a phone call, I get it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. how many times have you tried to help someone, picked up the phone, yeah. and they kind of... like they You help them and it's like, cool. Yeah, like, I'm one of them on. people... I know what you've done for me, yeah. even though all you've done is pick up the phone and gave me an opportunity. Like, even if I didn't take the opportunities, I would still be thankful to him. Definitely. Do you know what I mean? Definitely, definitely. But I think it's an interest on what you just said, right? Like, that that story you've just told about 
and then you've ended up that now I work and I play football at a decent level. I'm earning more than I would earn in a professional. I game. was earning more. So some of some of the boys and I won't like I, I don't know exactly what boys are on. Well, I know I know roughly what they're yeah. on. But I was earning more than what a League Two player would have been earning at the time. Because obviously, I was in the league. I was making that money. Now I'm making more than what a league footballer was making. So, so what I was going to say, like, do we want to be spe- specific? So, like, what's the average, like, let's talk League 2, maybe, because that's, like, the last oh, step. So, like, they're bro. making what, like... Because I do don't you think? even okay, think... I'm gonna I ask don't... You don't know, do you? I have a guess. What I've you been think out making for a while, week? so I don't know, but, like... Are we talking the average or like the top end? Like no, no, not top end. Just, just normal. Like just average, normal. Like. normal League Two player, mid table. Because I don't even think know, a lot. Obviously, of people... in every you got to remember in every team and every yeah, club, yeah, there's, the top earners, they're yeah. the top earners. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. The average the wage. Average, yeah. What do you think it is? Because you don't know. Because yeah, I don't think the I'm people, gonna, the guess. people, then will know. Like yeah, yeah you just gone. Seven hundred fifty pound a week. You see you. Mm. You're going crazy. I'm going crazy. It's more like four five. It's around that. There's man that will be on like three to four hundred pound a week playing full time League Two football, bro. But are they more like the trying to players. establish younger players, <coughs> or are these? Bro, it could be a 24, 25 year old. So he's got he's, he's got like hundred appearances in the league, whatever. And that's yeah. full time as well. It's full time. He could be on four hundred pound a week, bro. Oh, could be on four hundred pound a week. But I think that's important for us to to get that get this and, out and of there, right? Because, going, yeah. But I would say the average is probably about 500 quid. Yeah. You have to say 500 quid. So the average, so that means 50% of players are earning... Yeah, that's how averages yeah. work. 50% of the players are earning less than 500. 50% of the players are earning more. And obviously at the top end, it's a lot more than that. Mm. But it's important because I think there's a lot of glamour around football. Mm. And players think if you're a professional footballer with the blue tick that you're gone and you're making all this dough. But when you think about it, 500 pounds a week in the grand scheme of things is two grand a month, which is... Um, twenty four thousand pounds a year. A one bedroom oh, apartment in Shoreditch. <laughs> if you just add about, if you, <laughs> just if you, about, if you if you add in bonuses and stuff, let's just say maybe twenty seven. Let's say twenty seven grand a year. The average earning in London is about thirty three, thirty four thousand pound a year. So, but, but take this into consideration, yeah. So some people will turn around and say, yeah, but you're only going for two, three hours a day. Mm. The physical, and the mental. Like capacity that it takes out of you is untouchable. Yeah, but if you're going hard, it's actually not though. It's more like for five. Like if you get in train yeah. two hours, lunch and do a double session. Like if you're going hard, that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you're kind of just cruising, because there's some players that will, might want to do that doubles every day. Like yeah, they're yeah. trying to go no, there hard. Is, don't get me wrong. There's boys do, out there like, that graft that's out what I'm and saying. they'll leave the building so, like, at four on, o'clock. But, yeah, you're right on average. But I'm like, saying, yeah. You, it's taking out your physical yeah, and your mental. Yeah. It's not just and most of that is one. recovery, like when yeah. you yeah. And, and you're you could be in seven days. Yeah. yeah, and you can't do other things, right? And like for now, months you're locked up. You can't go away for the weekend. But or the point I'm making is that like so if we're saying the average was like four fives, that you can drop down to long non league only train part time, make double that. Let's say just like. Even double, maybe triple that. Maybe let's talk best Bro, case. I know boys. Yeah, that's triple non-league that. football mm. that are clearing a grand twelve hundred pound a week. Yeah, from foot, just from football, just from football, bro. They're yeah. but they're top. Yeah, they're yeah, top yeah. earners. Yeah. And then there's your, bro. Non-league is mad right now because there's boys on comfortably five hundred pound a week take home. Yeah, I can. Be, I, can playing, I can believe playing that. Playing Tuesday night, Thursday night, and a Saturday. They're un- you would never know them as well. Yeah. But, and they would them. never make this, the jump up because they're going to say to you, well, I'm making 500 pound a week. Yeah. And I'm playing I'm non-league football. I'm getting it probably cash in hand. Yeah. So there's no taxes, nothing. I'm yeah. not getting hit with no taxes. Yeah. And then I work my normal work, like job. Let's say if he's got another normal job, which yeah. is another 25K. Bro, he's on 50K a year. Easy like that. 50K a year, like that. Yeah. And the nearest footballer in League Two ain't on 50k, bro. No. They're on a max 30, 35k, like a standard wage. Yeah. This guy's making 30, 50k. You don't know who he is. But then. You have no idea who this person is. But then it's not is. adding up to me because you'll see, like, and obviously I'm not watching no one, but, mm. like, you'll see League Two footballers in their Libertine or they're in. <laughs> yeah. these, or, like, they've got the Jip Type McQueen or they've got Mercedes and all of these things. Like, they don't give off the image of just, like, a normal. Like just you know, no, like but I think the thing individual. is the average League Two player. So you have like I don't know what the average League Two team is made up of. Like quite, a f- there's more youngsters I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of men in that what? have played higher. In where? In that like, League Two. Well, no. maybe okay, maybe not a lot of youngsters, but like 
<coughs> more more than the top the higher leagues, mm. but there's also a lot of men that have played higher and come down. So like yeah. they have made money and come down. Right. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that balances it out a little just, bit. Like, see, me, is there a man that come into League Two and are just on average P's for ten years? Yes. No, nah, because I feel like them players just drop down. They're in the League Two for a couple of years. and oh, then they there's a man conference. that will stay in the league. They'll be go from club to club to club to club to club. Come or be at club just for in four League years. Two. You got to remember mm-hmm. your career is ten years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You spend four years. You've only got another five years to go. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you're you're near enough done. Yeah, yeah. So there's people that just are there, stable, so, standard League Two players. So the reason I say all of this, yeah, is <coughs> what would you advise a young player to do? Would you advise a young player if to they st- had what options? If they if the option is playing League Two, maybe a couple of seasons and maybe get bombed, or try and play non League football at a standard where maybe it's not as glamorous, the pitches aren't as nice, and you don't get the full time yeah. football. But it gives you the option to do other things. Because <laughs> I feel like the other thing is, what do you do after? If you're a League Two footballer who stayed in League Two for 10 years, obviously footballers don't really get the chance to do like educational stuff after or get time to work on maybe their own mm. businesses. Some do, but the vast majority don't. And so what are you going to do after football? Whereas if you're a league, non-league footballer, You've got your Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and then apart from that, you can just live your life. And yeah. then as soon as the football stops, you just carry on with this other yeah, your life. other life that you have. Yeah. yeah. Whereas when you're a league player, you kind of finish at thirty two or whatever, yeah. and then you got to start again. And then you got to start again. Yeah, for young players, if we're talking young players. I do like the, the you know the thing that you've done of going over to America. If you're playing at like quite a good standard, and you can go and play in somewhere like America and get a degree at the same time and have your tuition paid for, like. From a life point of view, like you learn, I think you learn quite a lot, and it's a good networking opportunity and just a lifestyle and stuff like that. Is is but you got that remember, a young person would? But you got to remember, not everyone is educated as Dom was to get them opportunities. Yeah, the but that's what I'm saying. So if you, through yeah, if you're educationally 70, inclined, like yeah, you know, but if you're then, not, which most footballers are not, let's yeah. be honest. How, what yeah. footballers do you know that are yeah. that educated, that that clever at a young age? Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. It's true. But yeah, I just think it's an important conversation to have because I feel like there's a lot of glamour around football. Being a pro baller. And like, it's not really going to make you that much peace. Like, I feel like we just have to be honest. Like, there's not that many footballers who are mm. making a lot, like, stupid money. Like, I always bring it back to the Frank Glock thing. He talked about leaving Charlton because he thought, well, I can go to uni and make more money in the city than I come from football. Yeah. I just think, I think with when you're coming through as a youngster... <clears throat> It depends what your ambitions are. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, that's mm. where you become unstuck. Mm. So, like, you're talking of your friend, like, he's got, he can go non-league, can go into yeah. the league, and you can go abroad. Yeah. He needs to know what his ambition is. Is it to make money? Is it to play football at the highest level? Mm. Is it to play in the nicest grounds? Is it to be in the best country? Mm. He, that's what he's got to decide. Facts. If it's money, then he's got to look at where he's going to make the most and go. Yeah. If it's I need to, I want to get to the top, mm-hmm. then you're not going to care about the money. And I truly, some people turn around and say, Yeah, but if I go to, let's say, I don't know, you're playing some non league team and then a team three, three steps above comes in and they go, But they're not offering me the money that I'm on. But, I, like, but my ambition is to play higher. You're a liar. Because yeah. if you're, someone's offering you an opportunity to go higher and your ambition is to get to the top, you're going to have to take a hit somewhere. You're mm-hmm. not going to get the money and. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 level that you want to get at isn't there isn't there the 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 thing around you got to have the right people around you as well because how many players do we know that you should have just gone and played non league bro yeah like you like I know your um, everyone's ambition is to go and play yeah. at the top but like let's but have some it people right, get like, the opportunity and they they start questioning it and then as soon as you start questioning I'm like you don't know what you want you're you're in a you're a myth. Because if your ambition is I I need to get to the top, I I want to get to the top. Take the emotion out of it. Like, there's how many men do we know that like are either lucky to like be playing Mm. a bit higher, and their day's gonna come where they're gonna get found out eventually because they're just like not that good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe or might not happen, but it happens most of the time. Like, Mm. okay, you bust a little bit, but we know what it is, isn't it? So you're gonna come back down soon. Yeah. (laughs) So like. Like the players have to be like honest with themselves a bit as well and be like, I'm not that good, innit? Like I'm Yeah, you like, yeah, I think yeah, you gotta be honest with yourself, but you still gotta if if an opportunity comes, because opportunities come for players out mm. of nowhere, don't matter if you're good or not, yeah, everyone gets true. an opportunity. Yeah. But if you don't know what you're after in terms of nice pitches, 
money, yeah. whatever, that's where you become unstuck. You got to know in your head what you're after. Mm. And like for me, I feel like I knew straight away when I dropped into non-league, my motivation changed yeah. because I was like, wait a minute, I'm making good money now. I'm making a good, uh, like better than what I was making before. Why would I go back into that environment? Because mm. I could have, no, I wouldn't say I could have gone, but I had opportunities mm. to go to clubs because I was doing well to go and train with clubs yeah. or go mm. on a trial, whatever you want to call it, yeah. to go back up. But I declined. I didn't even bat an eye. I was like, nope. Because I know I go back into that. I mean, rat- I felt it like it was a rat race. <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's just chasing, chasing, chasing. Yeah, and so I thought, nah, like I'm staying here and I'm just going to find my feet here yeah. and work. This is how I see my life. This is how I feel comfortable now in terms of how I'm going to make money. Because I yeah. felt like if I start going back higher, up the line, and I've been told for years, you should have played higher, mm. you should have played higher, mm. you should have played higher. Like, why, why haven't you played higher? Mm. And I've, I've had it at 25, 26, 27, 28. Mm. Oh, you should have played higher. And I'm like, people don't, don't understand. Yeah. I'm one of them people that is, I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. Yeah. You can't change my mind and say to me, oh, but if you do go you, there. Do you ever think that? That you should have played higher? I think I should have. I think okay. I could have. Okay. I could have played higher. When you say higher. But whether I should have is a different, isn't it? I could have played in the league. Okay. Yeah. I could have stayed in the league. Okay. At league two, at full time, I yeah. could have stayed in the league. Hundred percent. But there's no glamour in that, is there? But there's no glamour in it. <laughs> that is. There's no. I wouldn't. You see, I'm one of the people. So when I dropped into the league, I started to find that that I wasn't actually enjoying football at where I was. <laughs> so then I was like, yeah. I'm actually enjoying football yeah. now. Like I thought I was enjoying football. Don't get me wrong. Well, when yeah. I was there. I thought I was enjoying, yeah. I was having a good time, you would never know. But then I, when I dropped out and I was playing, I was like, no, I'm really enjoying football now. Yeah. Like, this is, like, I'm actually enjoying being here and yeah. turning up to whatever. So then I knew I wasn't, back then I wasn't enjoying football and I would never go back to that. Right. Because one, the earnings, and it was just too much going on. And I was like, that ain't, that's not for me. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I stayed there and I was like, I'm comfortable and I'm happy. And the main thing is for me is happiness within. Not happiness of like, around you like I'm not a glamorous person I don't need to make stupid amount to live the lifestyle yeah. I live you've been around me for years Connor you've seen yeah. I don't do nothing crazy so it's not that I need to make money to do Man and stuff. live a certain life I just feel like I know my worth mm. that's how I see it mm. so I feel like if this is my worth then I'd rather do it this way yeah 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 now so I think it's an interesting conversation because yeah I think the point is what do you want do you want to just make the most peace because mm. I feel like a lot of people play football for peace I think there's a confusion there's a confusion, on, especially with, with younger kids. So younger kids, <laughs> yeah, they see Ronaldo, mm. they see Neymar, and they go, oh my God, he's making 300 million, <laughs> blah, 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 all of this. And they're like, I want to be like him. Mm. But they don't understand what you need to do. To, forget getting to their level. Yeah, exactly. To even stand a chance of having a pro contract. Yeah. So one, they see all the good things, they see the money, but you got to remember, you got to decide what you want. Is it the money that you want, or some people want that I am a footballer? Do you know they want that like that tag, <laughs> yeah. and it's two. They're two different things. Yeah, okay. You're after money or you're after the tag. It's two different things, yeah. and that's where younger kids get confused because some of them are coming up and they're like 17, 18, and I deal with 17, 18 year olds all every day, and their thing is yeah I want to be I want to play for an academy. So I'm saying to them, why do you want to play for an academy? And they're just looking at you. Like they don't even they don't actually yeah. know. So that's just what they've been told. Of. They've been told it's good to be at an academy. Yeah. But why do you want why do you want to be at an academy? What's gonna change when you're at an academy? Mm. Um, they're not even mentioning the money yeah. because they know the money that that you get paid is stupid. Yeah. They're not stupid. They got yeah. me. So they're like, um, I want to get to the first team. But there's another route to get to the first team. If you're 17, 18 mm. and you're not an academy, like I've got 17, 18, 18 year olds that will say to me, This is my last year. My life. If I don't make if I that's it, that's me done, football's done. That's crazy, isn't it? And but they, are they lying though? <coughs> no, yeah, bro. how can you be done at 18? This is what I'm saying. They they think <laughs> if they're not at an academy as a scholar, that career's done. They've got no chance now. Oh, they don't understand that you can go to non league right, and work your way up. I'm right? here. Yeah. I'm telling them. I'm giving them the stories. <laughs> yeah. But somewhere down the line, this academy thing has been branded to them as this is like... It's even the worse in land. some regards. In some Mikhail, respects, Mikhail it's Antonio worse. is well in, in, in for West Ham right now. Bro, Europe, the league and these they, things. Come they, from this is what I'm saying. But the stories are in front of them, <laughs> but it's like they're blindfolded. They can't yeah. see these stories. 
they're seeing no, I need to be at an academy because all my mates or some of the boys that I know are an academy. But all your mates that are in academies are about to get released and they're finished. <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be in the same position as you yeah, in a minute. Thanks. So there's no they don't know what they want. Yeah. And I keep telling them, decide what you want. Like, what do you want? Are you playing football for the money? If you're playing football for money, just own it. Mm. Say I'm playing football for the money yeah. and do everything you can to I make something out of it. Danny Rose like and saying, these men. But these, some of them want the brand to walk yeah. around in their tracksuit and say, I play for blah, blah, blah. Even though they're on the train. <laughs> it's mad. Anston, even though they're on the train, no, it's it mad. You want to wear a West End tracksuit on the train, bro? <laughs> you don't understand. They'll turn around and walk around to say, "Yeah, I play for blah blah blah." Okay, but what? What is that? What is okay? Is this gonna? How is this gonna affect your life moving forward? Yeah, but it's for the thing, so they can tell their friends they play for West Ham, so they can tell girls they play for West Ham. What did this stuff? But this is it? what this is where it doesn't get you nowhere. Yeah, this is where it comes crashing down because crashing. by the time you hit 19, 20, you're finished. You're finished. And all you've got what your old tracksuits that you're still wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I've seen man come on trial to like non league teams wearing club tracksuits that they've been at. Different sponsors. So like when West Ham was like Umbro. But then you're saying you're saying to a man or fine. Macron. Like so when I when I was obviously back in um at Whitehawk and obviously I've been at Whitehawk for a while, but the first time that I was there with Kingy, Kingy can get players. You see when it comes to ballers, he knows every single player. Mm. So he used to get all these youngsters and all these men that have been released from this club, this he'll say, Yeah, this boy got from Leicester. Yeah. He's coming that guy, Kingy, how are you getting him? Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, we're getting we're gonna get some good like he's got these but these men are coming in at like obviously at that time I must have been what twenty two I think twenty three maybe at the time mm. and these boys are coming in I was like, they don't know they don't know who I am or nothing yeah. in it they don't know where I've been or nothing yeah. and I you see when I went to Whitehall yeah. bro I never told none of the boys my background where I come yeah. from mm. nothing when they used to ask well where was you at I uh, just used to oh, I just played for that yeah and I used to swerve the conversation I, I never used to say yeah I just come from Barney I played in like yeah, in I just the played a couple yeah. of teams like like yeah I was just like oh yeah just Kingy gave me a ring and, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I swear down. I never used to say He's nothing. Crazy, you know? Never used to say nothing because why am I? What? What? What's gonna change? Are you gonna yeah. treat me differently now? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. we're gonna be the same. So these boys used to come on trial and they used to have like their, you know, their training kit or whatever. And obviously we used to have like, oh, so oh, where are you from? Oh yeah, I'm from blah blah blah. Oh, where did you play last season? Um, I didn't. Know, I didn't play for no one last season. What? So what you been doing? Oh yeah, basically I got re- released. Like two years ago, and I've just been looking for a club and that, bro. Why are you still wearing this kit? Then, <laughs> like, you see, my thing is, once you're done with something, let it just go. Just let it go. Let it go. It's like you need to release yourself of it. You keep holding on to it. Don't get me wrong. When you're training with your boys and your yeah, you everyone that you wear your yeah. stuff, but go into another team to get something. Yeah. Where need nah, man. Like, what are you trying to do? But like, yeah, yeah that's the thing. So for me, I realized at like like I said, like twenty twenty one when I was at uni. I was like, if I really want to push, I can try maybe trying to get a look in America, maybe try to come back to the ends and do non-league and da 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 But I was just like, do you know what it is? I don't really enjoy football when it's that serious, if that makes sense. So like when it's, I'm fighting for a contract, like I need to feed my family. Like that wasn't, that's, <laughs> like I just realised that that weren't for me. Like that's not the essence of why I played football. Like, yeah. I played football because I enjoy playing football and I realised I was very comfortable in myself. Like, no one can say that I'm dead. So I didn't care if I don't play or I'm playing for a Sunday league team behind the farm. Like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> no one can say that I'm dead at football. So I was just like, you know what, I'm comfortable. Like, I'll just kind of hang up my thing and cool. Like, just move on and I'm doing other things and I'm happy with my, with mm. my life. But I feel like a lot of people are very insecure and think that if they're not a baller, even if they're, like you say, man, I get £500 a week, like, you shouldn't really be trying to talk to people crazy <laughs> just because you're a professional footballer or act in a certain way or, like, you're above people mm. when you're on £500 a week. That's not to discredit anyone who's earning £500 a week. Like, mm. your grand is your grand. Yeah, yeah. But it's more so if you're earning that kind of piece, which isn't wild... And you're looking at people a certain way because you play for <laughs> you because you play for Accrington Stanley. Yeah. That's crazy to me. No, but let's have it right. Like you're being a bit harsh. No, yeah, yeah, no yeah, harsh. Yeah, like like most footballers are not like huh? that. that what bad. I would say is no, young. You know, you're thinking okay. about people no, 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 your okay. age. But also, you got to remember, yeah. yeah. You got to remember, yeah. But well, people at Accrington you got, Stanley you know are like, as well. thinking I'm, I'm bugging yeah. out. Yeah, you got to remember, yeah. I don't think it's harsh to define someone by their earnings. 
Like you got, it takes a lot <laughs> to be a professional footballer. There's a lot of people that have tried and mm-hmm. still trying to be professional. But footballers. it doesn't make you better than anyone. No, 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 yeah, yeah. The way you speak to people and how you, yeah, act, how you, act, I that's get my that. thing. Yeah, yeah. No, but the point he's making is that. <clears throat> like you got man at like league two clubs like acting like yeah acting doing... wild because they got blue tick <laughs> and because they play for no I, dis- I don't I'm, no, I'm dis- no disrespect across... to Aquiton and Stanley like, but I just use that as an example yeah. I'm not but man across much of wild that. crazy like, someone tweeted you like, no 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 man act wild crazy because <laughs> they're a 21 year old 20 year old at Aquiton Stanley I'm like <laughs> That's it's that's not, not that's crazy to me. Like, I don't the, get in how the, you... in the minute <laughs> you'll be with me. Yeah, so. like I don't get how you think you're bugging out. Like, but that's just me. Like, I'm not again. I'm yeah, not a yeah. hater. Like, everyone do your thing, but yeah. just don't start acting like you're above people because you have this professional football. What about tag. people that are playing like Prem and Champ? Then no, same thing. You're not above anyone either. Like, but do, do they act like? Do you think? Do you think footballers are like quite arrogant and stuff like? Oh, they come across arrogant. The younger ones, especially. As you, you think, get older, you shake all that stuff off. No, nah, yeah. When you're new, you think the young 21, like 20, yeah, I think, I think the you're young gassed. ones are a little bit ignorant. Yeah, you're gassed. Ignorant, especially, especially to people that have done it. That's oh, my problem, yeah. yeah. No, no, oh, they no. are. But I'm saying, yeah. if they're ignorant to people that haven't done it, and someone's trying well, to... Well, like, examples, like, as in, like, they won't, like, listen to, like... Advice or like, ex professional. Are you talking football? about when men are going out and stuff? And yeah, that? just like just general, 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 just the way they carry themselves, like how they carry themselves and that. But yeah. I have seen professionals, young professionals at top Premier League yeah. clubs, when an ex professional, an ex professional, someone that's played in the Premier League yeah. for 10, 15 years, yeah. 30, yeah. is trying to give them some advice. Yeah. They turn their nose up at them. I swear. Yeah, like I've seen, but they, the way they're doing it, it's like they think that the man don't know. Man. But you see, when oh. you're speaking to someone, you know, well, they, you do you think they think, oh, like he's just washed up. Like. He's thinking, yeah, this guy's done that. He don't understand football now. He's old school. Old school. <laughs> <laughs> These times, the guy's playing. He's played in the Premier League, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, doesn't matter how. Old, we're not talking. When we're saying old school, we're, <laughs> yeah, not, we're not talking, talking like 1950. Yeah, man. we're not talking when the, the picture's black and white. <laughs> like, it weren't. You, know, you yeah, played yeah, in the Premier League. Yeah, you played yeah. in the Premier. And I feel like having certain conversations with certain people, they always think, yeah, man, but you. Your time's gone, like it's my time now. Yeah, but bro, it's just to make it as a professional footballer, it's the foundations and the foundations of being a professional footballer never to change, mm. whether it was 50 years yeah. or now. The foundations never change. So, if someone's giving you advice, <coughs> I would just say, in general, especially if someone's done it, you see, if someone's done it, been there and done it, but bro, do you think it's the ball or the money? What do you mean? Are they thinking I ball better than these old yes. these old man? One, some or of them they think, think I got peas in it. I'm like twenty and I'm like, a flying. No, no, no. Me. I don't think it's the money thing. I you don't think it's the money. You think you think it's ball? Like it's yeah, actually like, like yeah, my thing's pattern. Football like. back in the day was like this, but have you seen my? Have you seen me play right now? <laughs> <laughs> have like, you seen what, what we do? Like, but what, now, they don't, like, what they don't get is me. These ex pros, everyone have has come across absolute ballers that have not even been. Have not even gone close to being in the first team, yeah, exactly. mm-hmm. and you think you're gonna make it because you can do one, two, two step overs, <laughs> little trick. You might bag top bins, whatever, bro. You can't. That that means nothing. There's yeah, man. We've that all seen come, that. We've, we've seen... all seen man that can do Mad ridiculous stuff. Yeah. stuff. Ridiculous, yeah, of course. And I just think in general, if someone's trying to give you a bit of advice to help you in your career, because it's not someone that's been in the prem that speaks to you that's trying to get a leg up in in the in football. Is it gonna make it any better for him? And, but don't no, you think as well? Like, there's him. many examples of like players that we consider like top tier players, and I've had to like have a come down considerably, like both in the standard of football that they're playing at and the money and they're earning. Like even look at someone like re- very recent example like Jack Wilshire. Mm. Man's trialing in Serie B. The Serie B. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it like? And Cobo he's or like, like that. The, the probably like the hottest prospect in English football in the last what eight ten years something yeah. like that. So like if you can see something like that happen to a man in front of your eyes, you at think the, you're gonna make top, it, and you're top, not even you're level. not even you're, you're you're nineteen twenty playing yeah. twenty threes football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and he was already playing. He's playing against Barca and yeah. that nineteen eighteen, yeah. and you're telling me you're gonna make it. Yeah. Like if someone's trying to give you advice, just in general, me personally, I would just take the advice, soak it up, and I think some of them, especially at the top clubs, are earning too. Actually, I don't want to talk talk that too much, but like they earn a lot of money, like at a young for age. like not doing. It depends nothing. what club you're at. Yeah, but like that's the Chelsea's, what I said, the top the clubs, cities, at the top clubs. The Man United, yeah. the youth players like, earn a lot of bread, didn't it? Like, at a young age. 
The market's they are, they a bit are. distorted, isn't it? Like, I'm not trying to watch pockets or nothing, yeah, yeah, but yeah. like, it's a bit mad. No, but it's, I yeah. guess it's a bit. Also, I think you made a really good point that at a young age, if you're earning that much money, but like, who can like, tell you? It, stuff no, but like. it's hard for your head not to get gassed. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, 18 like, I'm and week, I'm earning more like, than my mum and dad. Like your old head, like yeah, you used to make peas, but yeah. you're just like do it. You're a pundit on TV and like, yeah. that. Yeah, 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 you're not really like. It's mad. Yeah, it's so, actually bonkers. But going back to like the non-league, what we're talking about, yeah. I got mad respect to non-league footballers though. I gotta say, it's a graft, man. It's it's a flipping grind. Mm. So can we talk? Can you talk us through your football days it, during the week yeah, so that people myth. can understand mm-hmm. what you do? Talk. It's a myth. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Well, it's not Patrick's, bad. You see, you slap Patrick's like top bins. Like your thing's pattern, so normal. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you see. You see, for me, yeah, it's my my work is calm because I, when I was young and I had an opportunity to pick what I wanted to do alongside. So I had an opportunity when I came out full time football to decide what I want to fill my days with during the day. Yeah. Right. Obviously, some people don't have that opportunity, like non league footballers. Yeah. Some of them have, you know, they're labourers, they're working, they're yeah. whatever. So they don't finish work till like five, six. So their days are very different to mine. Where I go into coaching and I've gone into a coaching a coaching position or a coaching role I've put myself in where. I'm finished by four o'clock. Right, okay. So it will never, ever clash with my training day. So like on the Monday, I'll, 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 like my Mondays, just go to work, mm-hmm. come home. In the evening, I've got some time. I'll go and play football with, with, with friends or whatever, or go to the gym, whatever. But Tuesdays and Thursdays are the longest days. So Tuesday is obviously your game night or training night. If you've got a game, you've got to be there at like quarter past six, half six depending like what time kickoffs in, but mainly half six. Yeah. So wherever you are, you could be you could be playing all over. Yeah. It doesn't matter where your team's based, all the teams are all over the place. So for Within me Within a region though, like yeah, like, like <coughs> Yeah, I guess so, yeah. yeah. I guess like so. you're not going Birmingham, like you're not No, going, no, no, yeah, no. Like, you're going you're not going mad places, but yeah. like for me obviously my my team's based in Kent. So yeah. we're Kent based mainly. Yeah, yeah. But then you've got a team in Brighton in our team. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Which is yeah, like two yeah, hours. Yeah. So um I'll finish work by four, but I normally I'm quite organised, so I'll have my stuff in my car from the night before, everything's in the car, just in case I might finish work a little bit later or whatever. From work, straight have down. some food, I'm straight down on my way to the game straight away. Play the game, obviously kick off at like 7.45, sometimes at 8 o'clock. Um, you don't finish till like 10.30. You won't get out of the change room till like, I don't know, 10.30, 10.45, 11 o'clock, let's say if you're showering, having some food after or whatever. If you play two hours away, you're getting in at one o'clock. Yeah, it's mad, Do you know it? what I mean? You're getting at one o'clock the and then you got work the next morning. Do you know what I mean? And then you're going again, you come home, you're resting on a Wednesday, you've got to do that again on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Thursday's a training night. You'll probably be done latest, I would say, 10 o'clock. But if you're like me traveling, I'm mm-hmm. not getting home till half 11, 12 o'clock every Tuesday and Thursday night, regardless mm-hmm. if it's a game or not. Um, and then Friday, you're shattered. Friday mm-hmm. comes, you're, you're still you're, working. You've got though. work. Yeah. And then in the evening, you're chilling. Then Saturday, Saturday's good because it's match day, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. No matter how tired or not, you find yeah, you find the energy. But like I said, for me, it's all right because I, I'm in football. So mm. I enjoy what I'm doing. It's not My work ain't stressful. It's calm. I've always said I would never be in a position where if I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. But I know boys that are up at six in the morning for work, grafting the whole day, game on a Tuesday night. You've got to remember, if you're getting in at 12-1, you've been up since six... You haven't stopped. You've played the game on some horrible pitch somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Probably got a battering from the manager on top of that. You <laughs> finish the, the game. Thing, you get in at 12, 1 o'clock and you've got to do that again at 6. You ain't even, You can't even like have a lay-in or nothing. Yeah, mad, so you've been it? up for like you know stupid hours. You've got to go again. And then you've got to do that on a Thursday and a Saturday. So it is a grind. I can't lie. It's a, it's a flipping grind. But I don't think some people have a choice to change that. Do you know what I mean? Your work is your work. Crap. And you play football. Most people play football, one, because of the money, and two, because they enjoy, enjoy it. Yeah. And they're the Crap. two things you play football, really. Do you know what I mean? So I don't think you got you can really make a choice. Yeah, but it also, it will do you better in the long run, I, I believe. Because, yeah, it's quite seamless for the football to just drop away from that schedule, right? Mm. So you just don't have things on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday anymore, and you can go out with your kids, or you yeah, can go you can out do whatever, and do whatever you want, yeah. your mates more. Whereas with professional <laughs> football, when that's your profession... There's like, a, it's just a, it's a complete lifestyle change, right? Like, you go into training in the morning, you have lunch, you got the evenings off, you're travelling to games maybe the night before on Fridays, mm. whatever, like, you're immersed in this thing and then you just kind of get dropped out of it and 
the normal life, the nine to five, or the, if you have to get up early to be a laborer or whatever, just waking up at seven o'clock. Yeah. It's just a completely different lifestyle. The mm-hmm. perception's also different that like when you're at a non league team, if you're doing stuff outside <coughs> of outside of ball, like it's not seen as oh, he's doing stuff outside, outside of ball. ball. Yeah. Whereas if you're full time, if you wanna do anything else, it's like you're not focused. Yeah. Like anything else. Like, exactly. Anything I, except play PlayStation. Like, <laughs> that's, that's fine. But, like, yeah, if you're on Twitch streaming and that, then it's fine. But like, any other, that, like, you want to do something that, you know, it's going to give you some other, you. you know, yeah, so yeah, yeah, help yeah. you out. But um, someone that's uh, that's quite decent at football um, from from the music scene um, that I've seen is um, is uh, Mr. Tion Wayne. Because um, did you say decent at football. Yeah, he's 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 all right. He's be, he's better than I thought it was gonna be. Where did you see that? When you invited me, when you invited me to um, oh, yeah. to power yeah, league yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of months back. You were playing. Yeah, he was he, playing. What was he? What kind of like defender? <laughs> he was playing up Hesky. top. He was just like he's quite quite a big big lad. He's holding so he was, it up and uh, holding it up, trying to do some stuff. To be fair, he need that in the five balls, and yeah, so he's not. He's not it was all right, but he's just recently obviously released his album Green with Envy. Um, I've showed me on the way here that there was a, a billboard in Times Square yeah, mad. promoting his music. That's hard though. That's which crazy. Which is crazy. Crazy. Um, so we just wanted to touch a little bit on sort of Edmonton and what an artist like Tion Wayne blowing up has done from the area. Because I feel like even if you're from London, you don't really know anything about <laughs> Edmonton because it's such a little small pocket mm. area. Yeah. But you've had a lot, had a lot of like... Edmonton? Edmonton's in, in North London, but you've had like good a lot of good footballers that have come from Edmonton. Yeah. And you've had like artists like Scorcher that we've had. Yeah, no one board. really knows because it's small, isn't it? But it's mm. just it's, it's it's very small. Especially it's two roads. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's tight knit, and yeah. that's why everyone knows yeah. everyone. Do you know what I mean? So what has obviously has someone who's from born and raised in in Edmonton? What has Tion Rain's rise like done for like the area or the group of people? Do you know what it is? It's not even like his rise ain't gonna change the ends. Yeah, you know, let's just be honest. It's not gonna change the ends. But what he's done, and I I feel like this is with other men as well that have not probably blown as as much yeah. as him. They all do the same thing and they all bring each other in. Yeah. So like Tion Wayne, like it's mad yeah because he's obviously done he's done a documentary yeah, as well. Yeah. He's got this out and I think it was what's today? Sunday. Mm. Like, during the week somewhere in it. I was out in, in Canary Wolf getting some food or whatever and I walked in and he was at the bar. Okay. Yeah, with one of one of the boys that I know, and he's turned around and he's shown man mad love. Oh, oh, God, well, he didn't he, he didn't know you was gonna be there. No, no, no. no it was a restaurant. Just, I was just yeah. going to eat. I was just oh. going to eat like randomly. I was just yeah. with one of my brethren or whatever. I've walked in like I've just literally walked in. He's at the bar yeah. and he's looked at we looked at his, and yeah. it's not like he's waited for man to. He's like shown man mad love <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like you know what I mean. Like he's he's man from the ends yeah, and yeah, you see yeah. when I like things like that and I know what he's like obviously and all the other boys yeah. it's like these men don't forget mm. because where Edmonton's so small yeah. everyone knows everyone and mm. every time someone does something good they're bringing each other in all mm. the time mm. and I think that's what makes us like a little bit more tight knitted than anywhere else where, where you go to the other ends it's so big and there's like three different sides to it and then there's this man and that man and they're doing all mad stuff. Whereas here, when someone goes, yeah. they bring everyone with them. When you see the documentary, it's all the man them from the ends, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's from the end. Yeah, These are, yeah. And you see the videos and you like you recognise someone, innit? Yeah, the yeah. man that are in the video are the same man that are from back in the day yeah. when, he's, friends, yeah, yeah. when he's rapping and he's doing, he's in the dungeon. And he's, <laughs> and in you, the dungeon. If you pause it, you, you probably won't know them. But yeah, yeah. if you pause it, it's the same man that are still around him. Yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. I think that's what makes the difference for me that you see that people stick yeah. with the people that come with them where I feel like different other ends, I don't know, because they're bigger and more, you know what I mean? They can yeah, leave certain that's... man behind and go with the next group and the next group, whereas here, it's like, nah. Yeah, because when you think of like North London music, obviously you mainly, which is, this is controversial, but you mainly think of Tottenham, right? So you think of like Rich, Chip, mm. Skepta, uh, New School Now, you've got like Heady One, you've got the OFB, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. So like I don't know why it's taken so long for an artist from the area because you've had like quite a few artists from Edinburgh. So you've had Scorchers and and these kind of like artists, mm. like the Ripper, these yeah, kind of yeah, artists yeah. who are solidified in our scene, but maybe to the masses aren't as aren't as known. Mm. But I don't know what's what it's taken for Tion Wayne to click, but. Yeah, like he's he's doing he's doing mad Just things. Knows how to make bangers, isn't it? Yeah, like his run ever since he's come out of prison, his run has been 
Yeah, yeah, it's been Incredible. great. It's good but as well. When someone <coughs> that stature like blows, mm. like even the people around him probably start seeing like life completely different because obviously man come from a certain lifestyle. So now you start seeing, oh, like I can live this way, and it's like, like mm. I ain't got to worry about I certain with, with negative Tion, things. Like, how like, I see it is he's he was willing to venture out, mm. yeah, and do stuff with different artists. Yeah, I think other man from the ends. They, they want to like they want in house in house. Mm. Yeah. If I'm going, I'm going with my bridging. Yeah. I'm going with this rapper that's from the ends, and you know what yeah. I mean. They've kept it that way, kind of thing. Whereas I think Tion, even I don't know if you've seen the documentary or not, but he's bust a lot of man. Mm. Yeah. Like so, when he done um, what's the place called? He done he done a thing in some dungeon, yeah. and he had to pay a tenner to get in to watch yeah. him perform. Yeah. And he wasn't even big back then. This was yeah. like years ago when yeah. he was like coming up. Doing yeah. uni raves and stuff like, yeah, 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 and yeah. I think one of them was like a five or a tenner to get in. Yeah, bro, he bought at least seven man out. Yeah, he was bringing like Stormzy to perform. He bought Dave Stormzy, Heady One, Dave, Dave, like these men that were nobodies at the time. He mm. was bringing man. All of them were on stage, and he was just like, even in the documentary, the, you could see the videos and okay. that. And he was just saying, bro, for like a five or a tenner, I have brought bare man out. He yeah, said, yeah. for now. If I was to do the same thing now, no. it ain't gonna be a tenner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I'd done that from day one because yeah. I didn't have a problem with bringing next man from different. I just thought, you know what? Yeah. These men are trying to get up. I'm trying to get up. We're all on the same journey. I didn't see as yeah. he's from that end, he's from yeah. that end. I just saw it as, you know what? We're all trying to get up. Let's go then, innit? Let's. Yeah. And he said, now you look at the room that the people that were there, the people that were recording, he said, yeah. producers, he said, everyone's gone. Everyone's yeah. blown up in their own rights. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, he's yeah. Not, like, he's not trying to say, I made them grow, but he's like, my yeah. thing is, if I'm doing something and I see man on the same journey, let's go. Yeah, for yeah, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, man, it's 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 good to see. And yeah, like it seems like he's also kept, like he remembers where he's from. Yeah, so yeah even though yeah, he has ventured out and stuff, and mm. he's got a lot of features on his album. You see in the documentary, like his managers are his friends. Yeah, he yeah, grew yeah, up yeah. With, like, so artists. even one of the boys that um that was on there, you played football with, but you did, you probably don't even know. But he was playing in that game oh, was as well. He? he was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to say his name, but he yeah. was there as well. <laughs> but he's in the video. He spoke in the documentary okay, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these men, they would never tell you. Like you, If they don't say who they are, they won't, they won't, they're not, they're not going to say to you, oh, I'm this. You would yeah, never know. Yeah. These are, like, I think that's what separates man from the end. We're, we're a little bit more humble with it. Yeah. Like Everyone's calm. Everyone does their thing. Not flashy. Nah, no one's <laughs> doing nothing crazy. You know what I mean? Everyone's just getting on with what they got to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's sick to see, man. man. And it'll be interesting to see where, like, how big he can get, mm. right? Because, like, he's probably, like, the hottest artist in the UK right mm. now, really and truly. Like, whenever yeah. he jumps on the tune, yeah. it goes. Yeah, like... it goes. The tune goes still. <laughs> so, like, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see where he goes and what else that does for Edmund and if he can bring f- f- through You see the picture artists. that he brought, um, what's his name to the ends? Ed Sheeran. Oh, Ed Sheeran. Yeah, Ed Sheeran. Yeah. See that? Yeah, crazy, isn't that's, it? Man? That's different. Yes, yeah, it's mad, Bro. Ed Sheeran, Edmonton Green, posted up. Crazy. Ed Sheeran is probably debatably top three biggest artists in the world right in now. In the bro, he and had he's he had, to Edmonton Green. Bro, he's talking to the Blue Nile fam. What's that? Caribbean. Oh, it's it's, everyone knows oh, about the swear. everyone knows about. It's a mad thing. He brought him. He posted up outside Edmonton Green Station, bro. Ed Sheeran. <laughs> Do you know how crazy yeah, that is? Man, that's crazy, that's different level. Yeah, man, it's mad. It's it, it's mad, but it's good to see, man. That documentary was good to see, and it's yeah, good to yeah. see that. Like, but even like when he done the Ed Sheeran thing and he brought him, it's not like he done it on a discreet thing. Yeah. All the man them, yeah. all the man them were there to meet yeah, him. Yeah, like yeah. everyone was there. Like yeah, you man, come. This is what's happening. Yeah. Be part of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's even good to see like in a documentary about like. I mean, the stuff that Scorch had done for him, like mm. him supporting him and then like Terminator talking about like giving him advice about, you know, coming off the road and doing the music thing and stuff. So, yeah, it's good to see that like it, that close knit community has at least brought through a star mm. and now he's going to bring through the next generation. So I think it's the three times three. I think it is like these the drill rappers or whatever. Yeah. He's going to try and bring them through and then. Hopefully, people can, can yeah, continue yeah. to prosper and, like, and, jump, and jump off the roads. Um, but yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap up there, lads. But if you've made it this far, as always, mm. make sure you're liking, you're commenting, you're subscribing, all of these things. Again, let us know what it is that you want us to talk about in these things. Let us know if you like the setup. I think it looks decent in here. To be yeah, fair, yeah, it's alright. Like it. I think right. we'll I think okay. we'll be back. We'll be back next week. But mm. that was a detailed on my podcast, and we'll see you guys again soon. Peace. Peace.